This video is to show you how to do the graphing and the stats for the red blood cell permeability lab. We were looking at a series of solutes and seeing was the red blood cell membrane permeable to or not. We did this by using the SPEC20s and putting the red blood cells in different solutions and recording their percent transmittance. We then found the percent of control uh, in each solution. And we were looking at, did it change its volume or not? So if we were to look at urea right here, which is a permeable solute, lots of urea channels, everything is pretty close to the control, which is 100%. That means that they didn't change very much. Urea went in, water went out, it balanced out fairly quickly. Now, if we look at glucose, the hypertonic solution, 500, is only 66% of our control. That meant it lost water, it created. Over here, at the hypotonic, it gained fluid, so it increased in size. Now, if we look here at our salt solution, 365, 208, what my guess here, its percent transmittance went up so much, the red blood cell actually burst got brushed with so much water it couldn't stand it, and it blew up. And that's going to give us an interesting peak to our graph. So you are going to graph the means for the permeable solutes on one graph and the impermeable ones on another graph. So what we are going to do, first of all, is find our means. I'm going to highlight these two values. I am going to go to formulas. I am going to go to auto sum and average those two. I now need to do it in every single yellow square. So I'm going to highlight that one, control C. That records my function there. And now, wherever I see a yellow square, I am going to highlight it like so. OK, so now I have my averages. I want line graphs. So I'm going to go over to Insert, and I'm going to highlight those five. So that will be my first one. I'm going to do line, I want the dots, and I get a line like this. One problem, I have the wrong units. So I'm going to come over here, I'm going to right click, that's control, click I believe on the Mac user, I think it's actually option click. I'm going to do select data, and I need to do two changes. First, to get my x values, I'm going to do edit my x category, I am going to highlight those and click OK. Then I have a series one, you should label that, mean, mean percent, mean percent glucose. And if I go over here, it now says mean percent glucose. I'm now going to come over and do the I need to add sodium. So I'm going to click on this, and you actually didn't need to go out. Right click, or I believe option click, select data, add category. It is going to be mean, mean percent, and I'm going to highlight that. Delete that and go like this and click OK. Now while I'm here, mean percent albumin, I'm going to delete that, go over my albumin and click OK. So I now have my graph. and. We see here the sodium chloride went way up there again. Pretty sure that because of such the big increase to lysed. But we have it going from 50 to 100%. It changed a lot. We're actually going to do stats and find out was this a significant change or not. So the next thing we're going to do is for, put a title and label our axes. So I scrolled all the way down to the bottom of the chart layout because I want both axes, I want to keep that, and I want a title. And unfortunately, it gives us these black bars. I'm going to click on the bars, press delete, they're going away. My chart title is Imperial Solutes. 
my x-axis title is percent of control and my y-axis title is concentration and now we're ready to paste this into a Word document so I'm going to click on it just anywhere in the white here NCI borders control C come over to Word open a new document control N then paste control V and we have our chart we are now going to do a graph I mean our stats and it is called an analysis of variance we are seeing how far these three points are varying from these three points, from these, from these, from these, from these. Just judging by how far those are apart, I'm guessing we are going to get a significant result on our ANOVA, which would indicate a p-value of less than 0 0.05. So I gave you a link on your page, and what you're going to do is in the box, you're going to put the means for all of the non-permeable solutes, of a given concentration. So all the 500 milliosmolars in one box, all the 350 in one box. And I gave you a hot link. Now the problem is this one was for six groups and you only have five groups. So I'm just going to do control click to follow the hot link. It's going to open this. Now the problem is I have an extra group. So I'm just going to highlight that, put a five, and problem solved. So now there's only five groups. In data A, I'm going to put all the ones for the 500 milliosmol. Now, we're not gonna do the means. We're actually, let's move the graph out of the way, going to do it like so. So those two, Control-C and Control-V. And it says, you can also just type the point separate by spaces, tabs, or commas. So that is separated by a space. I like commas, I put a comma in. Then we're going to do those two, control C, come over, control V, comma, oops. And two more comma, like that. And then you repeat it for the other ones. So the 350, you actually did have six. So 350 I'm gonna put in. That's 160. And 90, 93, group C. That's all 100. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Group D. I'm actually going to skip the 250s and just do the 200s. Do not skip the 250s. You actually do have six groups. So 114, 123. 112, 176. and 164 and lastly our group E that is 118 125 365 208 205 and 185 so I've gotten all my numbers in again this actually was okay you can keep it n equals 6 because you have six groups and I then scroll up, I say calculate now, and it shoots out a p-value. It actually shoots out a lot of values and does some of squares, some of means. It's actually a nice website. It says the probability, assuming a null hypothesis, 0. 0.0002. That's your p-value. And that is certainly less than 0. 0.005, so that means that we had a significant difference between all of our points. From these points to these points, it was a significant change. Now when you do the permeable solutes, hopefully that p-value is closer to 50 or something like that. That is how you do the sets. 
That is how you do the graph. And I hope that you understand what is now expected of you. And of course, when you are done, you're going to copy the stats in, say that these, this is the graph of the permeable solutes. It basically increased as our concentration went up or went down, meaning that the cells were taking on water for glucose, NaCl, and albumin. And we got a p-value of 0 0.0001 or 2. And so you need a little write-up explaining it, and you need to include the p-value and the stats. Same thing for the permeable solutes. And then you write a conclusion. What were we doing? What did we prove? What the results were? And sources of error. Thank you very much, and have a good day.